But I do, I do, I do take advice from my father. A lot of you know my know, don't know my dad, Bernie. And my dad said, "Son, preaching is like drilling for oil. If you haven't reached your goal in 10 or 15 minutes, stop boring." <laughs> Today we celebrate the Epiphany. You'll be all right, Renee. <laughs> epiphany is a revelation. The aha! I got it. It's Bell figuring out the telephone. It's Edison figuring out the light bulb. Even today we say, "Oh, the light bulb just went off." He just got it. Aha! Some get it. It's like when you tell a joke and you get three rounds of laughter. The first round, people get it. The second round are the people who got it later. And the third round are the people who got it first, laughing at the people who got it second. <laughs> That's kind of the way it goes. That's that epiphany. And we all have those aha moments. Not just when you tell a joke, but in life. Specifically, spiritually. I, I love to tell aha spiritual stories. Um, a friend of mine would probably be embarrassed that I would tell the story, so I'll just change the name. Let's call her Jenny. So, Jenny comes to the, um, the school, and it's a Catholic school, and she's a hardcore Lutheran, but she loves Jesus Christ and thinks, well, I'll just teach at this Catholic school and just, you know, do what I have to do to teach and do my job. I'm not teaching a religion, so it's okay. Well, Jenny made the mistake of hanging out with the Catholics who were solid in their faith. And through that experience, um, she came to a deeper awareness of what they really taught and would go home. And when her mom would say something and she'd go, well, actually, no, that's not what they teach. This is what they really teach. And her mom would be like, hmm, well, okay. So that discussion was over another time. Something else would come up. Well, something about Mary. Well, actually, you know, Mom, this is what they teach. And so Jenny was coming to greater and greater awareness of what the church actually taught instead of what her Lutheran faith had taught her that the church actually taught. And so little by little, she had these little aha moments, these little epiphanies, these little revelations that sooner, quickly, Little by little, all of her objections to and opposition to the Catholic faith drifted away. And so she began to realize she was in the wrong church. And it was an aha moment, but it was also a struggle moment because she said that she chose for her confirmation saint, St. Paul of Tarsus, because she was a persecutor of the church. And it was her ignorance that caused her to persecute. And there was many aha moments that we had in our conversations. We would sit down and talk about God. And I would do my best to explain the, the circumstances. And her aha epiphany downfall, I do believe, was someone else, one of her friends at the school saying, um, Jenny, I can't make it to Eucharistic adoration. Could you fill in for me for that hour? And Jenny was like, sure, no problem. Jenny said, I, I like to pray, no problem. So she goes and does Eucharistic adoration. <laughs> She's still Lutheran. She's a member of the Lutheran church and going to Eucharistic adoration at a Catholic church. And that was the beginning of the end for her, um, her, 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 the previous way of life that she knew. And it was like an epiphany. She realized that's real. That's really Jesus Christ. His body, blood, soul, and divinity in that gold, funky-looking, star-shaped thing. She realized, you know, it's a monstrance. She found out what it was called. And the, the aha moment, the epiphany moment, that coming to the awareness that Jesus Christ was present in front of her, and she realized that she had to make a decision. And so she decided to go last year with her family to the Lutheran church to go to the Lutheran service. And somewhere during the homily, she said, you know, sitting in the Lutheran church doesn't make my heart Lutheran any more than me sitting in the car makes me a garage. Makes me, in, make, sitting in the garage makes me a car. <laughs> I just ruined that one. 
Would you forgive me? I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> it's, it's, been a, it's been a funky translate, uh, tr transition. Um, I'm still unpacking. Um, I moved Tuesday. My phone number became active Tuesday, like midnight, and 7 a.m. I got my first call, and shortly thereafter, another call, and I was like, wow, business is good here. <laughs> Today I was supposed to have two funerals. I had one here, and then the other one I had to call up one of the other priests to cover it. So it's been it's been kind of crazy. It's an epiphany. I realized, kids, over you're in deep. <laughs> well, well, here's the situation. His father Felix said he's going to stay the administrator until they found a priest, and I said, this is silly. I'm just down the street in Owen. I can cover it if if we can cut one mass and I can fit it into the schedule, and if the other priest picks up another mass. We can cover it. We can make it happen. And so, and so that's how I ended up here, if you're kind of wondering how that worked out. So I'm, I'm glad to be here to, to cover Loyal. And, and at some point, maybe at 7 o'clock when the phone rang, the epiphany is like, you're going to be busy, at least for a little while. And so, and so I realized, that's why I got into this, you know, to, to be able to help people, to bring people to that aha moment. The aha moment, when the priest says the words of consecration, this is my body, this is my blood, that is the epiphany. When the priest holds up the host and says, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. It is the epiphany. But there is more to it than that. Historically, could I ask one of you all related, right? <laughs> They are. Carter, Colby, Bailey, Brady. Can one of you bring over the sacramentary for me? That big hunk in red book. There's something that we need to show you in this. This isn't something that I could have shown you last year. Because this new sacramentary is, is different. And there's an aha moment. Can you see this? Probably not. This, this is the epiphany in the book. You see the, the, the kings, they have incense, they have gold, and they have frankincense. And now this is a wonderful picture that they put in the book. This wasn't here last year. And they opened up the book this evening to pray the epiphany, and I was like, well, that's an epiphany right there. I didn't know that was there. But it shows us something. It shows us the kings. They're coming forward and bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And those three things, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh, are three aspects, or three things that we can learn from Jesus. The gold is for the king. Jesus is the king. The frankincense is what you offer to God. Today we use some incense around the altar. The altar is offered to God. The incense, what does it do? It goes up. What are our prayers doing? Well, they're going up. The incense is a physical manifestation of our spiritual hope and expectation that our prayers are going up to God and are received. So what about the myrrh? Well, at that time the myrrh was used for burial. They would anoint the body with this perfumed ointment. And so the kings are bringing a message in the gifts that they bring. What you buy as a gift says something about the giver or the receiver, and in this it says a lot. That is an epiphany. So what is the challenge? The challenge for us is to realize and to be looking for those epiphany moments, those aha moments. Because sometimes God can come to us in ways we don't expect, and if we're not looking for it, we won't see it. The epiphany of realizing that that friend of mine, Jenny, did not belong where she was. She had to become Catholic. She received her first Eucharist back last summer, and then sometime this late fall, early, early winter, she was confirmed in the faith. And her patron saint, Paul of Tarsus, Paul the Apostle. It is an epiphany and an awareness so, the epiphany that we can have can be small. Simple awarenesses of Christ's presence in our lives. But we have to put ourselves in the position to receive that awareness. In other words, we got to pray. 
we have to pray to be open to those little aha moments, those little revelations, those little epiphanies. Then we can see more clearly God working in our lives. And then, through the eyes of faith, we can come to the altar and see what Christ is giving us. He is giving us what looks like bread. It looks like wine. It tastes like wine. It tastes like bread. But Christ has transformed it on a supernatural level, on a, on a very real level. It is, after all, the real presence. It is the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, under the form of bread. It is there to transform our hearts. It is there to transform our minds so that we continue to be in that epiphany moment, that aha moment. It's amazing to think about. The epiphany was celebrated more than Christmas in the early few centuries of the church. It was an extremely important holiday. And now recently Christmas itself has kind of taken more precedent or a greater role than that. And that's okay. But in the early church, the epiphany was the awareness that God was among us. The, you missed it, okay, now you got it. Aha, God is in front of you, what are you going to do? And that's what God is asking us now. You're here, you know He's real. If God wasn't real, you wouldn't be here. If you didn't believe, you wouldn't be here. God is challenging you to say, okay, you believe, you are here, now what? Take it to the next aha moment. Take it from the light bulb that they were able to build up to a compact fluorescent, up to a next level, you know, working your way up in faith, taking those steps and those new epiphany moments. And in that, we will grow deeper in our faith with Christ, and Christ will become more real, more genuine, more authentic. And one day we will have that great epiphany moment where we will be able to enter into the heavenly Jerusalem with the final and great aha moment, the great epiphany where we can get that unity with God, that great aha moment, and rejoice for all eternity in heaven with all the saints and angels.